Okay. Good afternoon. Welcome back to the 43rd Ryder Cup here at Whistling Straits. We are joined by European Captain Patrick Harrington. Uh, Patrick, we have um, we have pairings, and now we have matchups too. Um, maybe an overarching thought on on the the four uh, teams you put forth, and 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 what you see in the matchups that will go off tomorrow morning. Well, obviously, I'm very comfortable with the team I've put out there. Uh, strong, experienced team. I did have 12 players that could play foursomes, uh, so probably that it was a pretty tough decision to, to have to rest four. It wasn't a, it wasn't a very easy uh, decision. I think uh, it was pretty clear to me where we were going, though. Uh, very happy with my partnerships I put out there, and uh, clearly it's interesting when you see the matchups. Uh, we, we would have been aware that uh, JT and Jordan would have, were going first, obviously, so uh, we were obviously going to lead ourselves with a strong partnership. Uh, as you can see with John and Sergio. So I'm uh, sure the whole world will be watching that one. Uh, you know, after that, you know, we got the Victor Hovland, rookie. What a great player, what a great guy. Uh, equally matched up with Paul Casey, strong player over the years. Not really necessarily thinking that we're, we're going there for an experienced guy with a, with a rookie. We, we, Victor is in a nice place, but two strong players together. Uh, obviously, Lee and, and, and Matt, uh, you know, both from the same town at home, uh, two strong players. Matt himself, a great match player, uh, playing great. And Lee, you know, a stalwart beside him uh, with the experience. I like, I like the way that they've come out together, played together, and I feel, uh, I feel pretty strongly about that. And obviously, everybody would have predicted the last one. I assume that wasn't too hard. Rory and, and Ian uh, played well in the past. Uh, probably going up against their new young guns. Uh, you know, Patrick and Alexander look like a partnership that they may be looking for for the future, uh, going against an established partnership of ours. Okay, thank you. Let's hit the floor. Shane, uh, number three. Patrick, uh, I thought it was very interesting that all four of your pairs only played together in the practice rounds one out of three days. Uh, that's highly unusual, uh, not just for U Amer European teams, for American teams, for anyone. Can you explain the uh, thought process there? We knew our partnerships well in advance. Uh, picks, where we knew our partnerships with picks, and all that was considered. You know, you, you don't want to get bored playing with a guy. Honestly, you know, I, I've had it in, pra in, in tournaments. You play three days with somebody, and then you're playing with them the next five, four rounds of golf. That can be really tough. Uh, I want everybody in my team to to play with everybody in the team to you know not turn up in a week like this and and by the end of the week go oh, I, I never saw a player I never experienced that player and you know I never got to see what they were like in this situation so I was very keen on the players to uh, to mix with each other and to get the full experience of the other 11 players in the team uh, I knew the partnerships were looking after themselves that yes they have to trial foursomes and they did have, have a go at the foursomes and uh, you know made sure that they're comfortable with which tee shot they're hitting and which ball they're hitting uh, they had enough of, of that but I just didn't want them to overdo it uh, so I know I'm the f I, I'm probably the first captain to do it like that but it's certainly every captain has to bring their own personal experiences and from my personal experience uh, you know you just you want to turn up on Friday and still have that freshness and enthusiasm uh, and excitement and a little bit of I suppose a little bit of intrigue in the first you know when you're going out there and then a quick follow-up uh, you hinted at it how soon did all these players know about these matchups when did they learn them I, I would think the earliest ever so very early uh, they're well aware of what the what they were doing early on this week and uh, uh, yeah it's something players have, have said they want to know, so I, I we knew. Uh, I probably told you these partnerships, uh, likely partnerships. Uh, you know, we've been working on these for for months. And um, when the team was was named a week ago, I will say I have twelve players that could play foursome. So yeah, there was there was no partnership. There was other partnerships that could have gone in there, but there was no surprises in terms of of what we were what we could do. Uh, we had plenty of options, and uh, you know. A strong possibility was you, you we, we will mix and match our foursomes uh, going forward as well because as I said we have we have 12 players who are very balanced very strong all the way through and uh, 
good ball strikers that can play both foursomes and four ball. Thank you. On your lower left, Jeff, 19. Patrick, you have a, a Matt Fitz, Fitzpatrick going out in the third game. You, you were an assistant in 16. He had a rough go. Can you just speak to the growth you've seen in him from that point to where he is now? Well, look, he, he's, he's always had it. Uh, I know he didn't have a very good week, a uh, comfortable week that week in 2016. Uh, you know, we had a tough week as a team. Uh, but Matt's been a, an underestimated player for whatever reason for the whole of his career. He continually delivers on a big stage. He is a great player, uh, does fantastic. Like, all the way back to he's a U.S. amateur champion. Uh, yes, seems to you know, get lost just because he's a quiet lad and a studious lad and, 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 you know, you know, works hard. I think he gets lost a little bit in the general media in the sense of, you know, there's not enough razzmatazz for him. Uh, you know, if you look at his results and the way he plays, he's, he's great. Uh, and, you know, I, I've said it all along. I'm, I'm, I focus much more on, on the score the player does than anything else. Uh, you know, it, doesn't have to be all showy and fancy and all that. Matt is just a good, great, solid golfer, and uh, yeah, always underestimated. And you know, not not by me or his team, uh, but you know, sometimes people just because you're not flashy, as you know, people don't seem to not think of him first at first point. Even there, you were nearly struggling to get the name out. Like he's been around a long time and is a winner. All right, right across here, the way, number six. Hi, Farik. Um, Steve Stricker was saying that uh, uh, nothing is going to, barring uh, injury or illness, nothing will change his plan for tomorrow afternoon. Um, is that yours as well, or are you going to watch how they go in the morning and maybe adjust things, your, maybe adjust your plan for the four balls? No, I, I think we're pretty set, yeah. Uh, I, I, would, I would know my plan for tomorrow all the way through. I, players are aware of that plan and uh, clearly we don't put the team onto late morning because things can happen anything can happen that's that's slightly i won't say unknown but slightly unknown at this stage but uh, we will be very set in what we're doing and it would take a take a lot for us to change our mind we're going to go to alex on 20 right behind me patrick um you've been a vice captain numerous times has the pairings part of this and when you've told players change from the first time you were vice captain till now? Mm. Certainly changed since the first time I was a player. Uh, you know, I know my first one I found out, you know, just before the opening ceremony on the Thursday that I was playing Friday morning. Uh, that was kind of somebody had pulled out sort of thing, so that was a little bit different. Uh, but I think... Uh, we have tried over the years to, to, to be as early as possible with given the, the, the information and I do believe this is the earliest this week for us. Uh, I got it out there early because, you know, we were very comfortable. As I said, this is an interesting team for Europe. It's very strong and balanced, you know, all the way through. Uh, you know, and, and foursomes wise, it's very balanced, so and clearly in four ball wise. So it's it's not like it's uh, we had plenty to you know sit down and work with, and and it was you know it was a very fair way of putting out the team, and and the players responded to that. They're they're comfortable knowing uh, when and where they're going to play, and and uh, you know they've responded very nicely to that. Because of, because of that balance, could you foresee playing anybody five? matches this week? Yeah, look, it, 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 yeah, absolutely. You know, you, 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 you get a guy out there winning. Yeah, you, you can push him a bit too hard. There's no doubt about that. Uh, but yeah, it, 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 it's, it's a, it is a possibility that players will play five times. Uh, you know, it wouldn't be off the cards, no. But, you know, maybe ideal, in an ideal world, you, you wouldn't do that. We are going to beam out to Ian Slattery. Ian, you're with the European captain. Go ahead, sir. Hi, Patrick. Um, with Lee Westwood and Matt Fitzpatrick both playing Pro V1Xs, and 
Hovland and Casey both playing Pro V1s. They're, they're both playing the same balls as their partners. Was that part of the reasoning um, of their choice on top of their obvious qualities? And a second question, is there any truth in the rumour you've ordered Packers jerseys and ditched the uniforms for the lads tomorrow after Steve Stricker's uh, Chicago Bears admission? <laughs> uh, golf ball-wise, yes. Yeah, it was a clear part of it. it, 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 it players are interesting. It, it depends on lots of players. can. And, and by the way, there's no one-ball rule anymore in foursome, so they have, they have made it a lot easier. Uh, so you can mix and match their golf ball as you go along. But uh, it certainly makes it easier if both players are using the same ball. Uh, but it also depends on the player himself. Some players uh, you know, have good history and might have used another ball at some stage and are happy to change other players. You know, might necessarily have that in their head. So you, it's strongly considered what golf ball is being uh, used by the players and something you have to be very aware of, aware of when you're looking at a partnership. And uh, yeah, we might recycle their our lovely outfits from uh, yesterday, the Green Bay Packer-esque ones. Look forward to that. Let's beam out again. Adam, Shupak, go ahead, sir. You're with, you're with Captain Harry. Greg, Adric, given that you said that uh, you feel your team's very balanced, that they, you, know, you could put so many different lineups out there, is it safe to say that, that all 12 of your players will play tomorrow? It would be... It would be an unknown, uh, like an unknown event if that didn't happen. Like clearly, yeah, something that I can't predict right now. So we put the team in late tomorrow morning and we do that for a reason because obviously we have to look at, at all scenarios, but the, I, I, I can't con contemplate a reason bar, you know, I don't know, illness or COVID or something like that, but everybody will, will play uh, and everybody is ready to play and they have been ready for that for, uh, the last three days. Going out again to Scott Misha. Go ahead, sir. Hi, Patrick. Uh, I was wondering, I mean, you've put all of your most experienced players out in that first session. How much was that by design? Yeah, we've gone with an experienced setup. Yeah, no doubt about it. But it was it was our strong setup. It just happened to be experienced. Uh, so yeah, you, you know, I was happy with that. There's no doubt when it when it when it came out like that, and you're looking at it and you go, yeah, that's very experienced. That is a, a is a is a big bonus, but it was also a, a very strong setup. Uh, but it didn't weaken our four balls. That was very important. Uh, you know, we still we still have a strong four ball setup, and we haven't taken from the afternoon by going with a strong setup in the morning. Let's stay in the. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Scott. Follow. Up. No, thank you. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, let's stay in the room and let's go to Brian Eight. Yeah, Padraig, can you just, uh, I don't know if you've touched on it, talk about the importance of the first session in a, in a Ryder Cup on, on the Friday morning and um, maybe a little bit on the, the reason for your ordering of the, of the, of the four pairing. Uh, look, the first session on the importance of it is decided after the result. That's the way it goes, you know, the, the team that goes out there and, and, and gets a lead will say momentum is everything and the team that doesn't will have to, will have to find another way. So uh, we, in a perfect world, you would like to go out there, uh, win the session, win it well and, and lead from the front and keep going. Uh, we don't get that choice. We've got to go out and earn it. Uh, we put out a strong foursomes group, yes, uh, as regards the, the sort of... Uh, positioning of the matches the only one we would have been aware of would have been JT and Jordan and we've got a very strong pairing in that match uh, you know outside of that you know clearly Rory and, and Pulse were a, a pairing that would predict it and I, I suppose if anything we could kind of just split those up from the, the, the first group there at the end and and we've uh, we've two lovely pairings in the middle so you know it's just a nice way, but we weren't too focused. Bar that first match where we would have been aware, we weren't too focused on, on who they were going to come up against or, or how, how that was going to pan out. Just to follow up, was there something you saw in, in Rory and, and, and Ian in Paris a couple of years ago that encouraged you to put them together again? Oh, absolutely. They, they, they played lovely there. They, they, they work very nicely on this golf course. Both of them are in good form. So, yeah, I, it, it, it was a partnership. We came here 
that you would have always had in your head and then you know when you when you match it up on this golf course you show yeah this is this is a, a running certainty uh, from early in the week let's go over to jeff lower left 19. Patrick, john rahm was in here earlier today talking about the great spanish heritage in this event uh, and what it's meant how, how long have you been thinking about putting that pairing together with sergio it, it's been it's been there a good while yes uh, it's something both of them really want. Uh, I think uh, they're both at a nice place in in their careers now. That you know, it, it is interesting when you match up countrymen. Uh, I know. I would say this. I started off playing with Paul McGinley in the World Cup back in the day, and we we won it in '97, and he was just a great partner, captain. But as I progressed as a player, there was a period where we just weren't a great partnership anymore. Uh, there wasn't a clear leader in it uh, i think with with john and 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 sergio it really they really have looked at this they've matured themselves over the last couple of years into a beautiful position uh you know uh where you know it is the right of cup of course where sergio is is you know he's the experienced one he's leading out there and and he and he, he he knows he's playing with the world number one uh you know fantastic for both of them and they, they really uh, very, very comfortable that they're going to get the most best out of both, both of them, both of their games. Right behind me, Alex, yeah. 20. Patrick, um, if you, we make a lot of the matchups between the Americans and your team. If you would have known what the matchups were beforehand, would you have changed anything? No, you can't, you can't really focus on the opposition. You know, you've got to concentrate on what your team is doing. Uh, I'm happy with what I see on paper. You know, we, as I said, we did know JT and Jordan were likely to lead out. Uh, so, you know, and we want a strong start ourselves. Uh, that That is an interesting match, but you got to focus on your own team, your own players, and, and, and be comfortable that no matter who they come up against, they will do the job. Captain, we're going to wrap it up right here on three. Well, Patrick, um, Tommy Fleetwood, obviously 4-0 oh in Paris. In Paris, got to be tough to leave a guy like that out. How hard was it, and That's, how did he react? That says a lot about our team. Uh, you know, uh, very much says a lot about our team that he is comfortable uh, after going 4-0 oh in the matches. That you know, he's not there in the foursomes the, the first morning. He he can look around his team and be confident that there's other people taking up that strain, uh, and he is prepared to sit there and wait his chance in the afternoon. Uh, which really just sums up our team, how, how balanced it is and how comfortable and the understanding of the players that, you know, that they have to uh, give other people their opportunity as well. I, I want every player in my team absolutely dying to play every match, but I want them to also understand that there's other people in their team. They, they have to step aside and they've done that brilliantly. They're in, they're in a very nice place that they know what they're doing. They're ready to go and uh, very comfortable uh, that their teammates are going to pull their weight and that everybody will, will do their job this week. Thank you. Captain, you've reached Ryder Cup Eve. Uh, have a good evening, and we look forward to seeing your team tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you.